This is the Alfa Romeo C42 Formula One car, except this one won't be racing in the championship. This is known as a show car, and its whole intention is to look exactly like the real thing. Now, these cars are made by Memento Exclusives, and today we're gonna to be showing you the full process from start to finish, showing you how these cars are created. And this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. But let's get onto the build. The first step is to cut the carbon fiber from the stencils. There are hundreds of different stencils for each car. These stencils are transferred onto the carbon fiber material and cut out and put into individual kit bags for each car component. This is one of our pieces for our halos that we make for the cars. This is a pound for one side, so we'd cut this out at the, at the start of the week and we'd freeze it and then it would come out when it's ready to use on the morning. So in the morning we'd take this out, we'd lay it up onto our mould, it would then be cooked in the autoclave. We freeze it to try and keep as much carbon for as long as possible. Every different carbon has a different outlife and eventually it will start going crispy. I think this stuff we've got is 21 days. Now that the carbon fiber has been cut and put into the mold, it is then bagged up and put either into an autoclave or this large oven. And to figure out which it goes into, it all depends on where the carbon fiber is being seen from. For example, if the carbon fiber is being covered with paint or with vinyl, then a clear glossy finish isn't needed and can just be cooked in the large oven. However, if the carbon part is on show, like a brake drum where you're wanting a nice finish, this is where the autoclave comes in. Not only does it cook the carbon and its resin in its mold at a high temperature, but it gets external pressures from 50 to 90 psi which usually takes around three and a half hours. This silver drum here is the pressure vessel, and above is the vacuum lines which is pulling out all the air, which you can imagine it a little bit like a vacuum bag for when you're going on holiday, a little bit like that. But with those external pressures, it means you can get a smoother, clearer finish. Now once the individual parts has finished its initial cure, for parts needing to be combined, they'll be bolted together in another mold and put into the larger oven for its post cure, for just over an hour at 150 degrees. And then the temperature will slowly ramp down in order for the parts not to crack. So for example here with the halo device we can see that it's combined from three different molds together. The parts are then taken to a breakout room to be removed from their bags and have any excess resin from the molds be scraped off and be checked over for any cracks or damages and is then ready for the dry fit. But just before that a word from today's sponsor Surfshark VPN. Surfshark can digitally change your location to another. So if you're like me here at Silverson trying to watch your favorite Fast and Furious film, but you're restricted, you can just digitally change your location to somewhere like Canada where it is available, and therefore you can watch it without any restrictions. But it's not just limited to folk like us in the UK. Surfshark has over 3,000 servers across 100 countries, meaning you can unlock even more GeoBlock programs and services in different territories. Now, I love using their VPN service, and I honestly do use it every week, and it seems like you guys do as well. So they've actually upped my discount code to 85 percent off when you use my promo code MattAmos at checkout, as well as getting three extra months for free. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try all of this out, and if it's not for you, you can cancel without any risk of giving it a go. So make sure to click that link in the description below to find out more. We now come on to the dry fit stage here in the trim shop. This is where all the carbon parts are now bolted together to check that all parts are correct and fit nicely. Some sections here are needing to be trimmed down, which couldn't be achieved during the molding stage. This is to allow the desired bodywork shape being identical to the real counterpart. During the dry fit stage, parts of the bodywork are sanded down by the seams, with some sections being covered with filler and again sanded down to make the surface nice and smooth. This is so then when it eventually gets painted, it will all appear as one part, rather than two different sections put together. Once the dry fit has been finished, these parts will then be taken down to the paint workshop. Here, the crew will prep those parts with more filler and sanding in order for those parts to be ready for painting. The goal here is to make all the surfaces as smooth as possible and cover any small holes or imperfections. Plus, making the surface ready for primer, just like here, with a halo device being made from carbon fiber. So once we receive that, we will start to prep the halo. We'll sand that down. We'll get a coat of primer on there. We'll prep that down again, and then we'll get that into a, a color, team's color. So we sand down, basically get rid of the impurities or the imperfections in the, in the product. We'll then make that smooth and then paint over the top of that. You can't paint straight over the top of a raw product because unfortunately it just wouldn't stick. So yeah, it's just about getting the best finish and the best possible base to work from. We'll put a primer coat on first, then we'll be able to prep that and then go on with a, a base coat uh, and then a lacquer over the top, matte or gloss. A paint booth is needed mainly for health and safety reasons. When you're spraying obviously paint out it's quite harmful to uh, personnel, you can't breathe that in and also for finish of the product as well. When you are painting you'll get an overspray, a dust like clouds in the area. You have an extractor in there which will then draw uh, all of that paint away uh, into a filter 
and it's obviously clean air comes out of that as well. So we'll spray at a temperature of about 21 to 23 degrees uh, and then we'll flush the paint off in between coats up to about 30 to 40 degrees. So we'll cure that at 60, you know, 60, 65 degrees for essentially like depending on what product it is, 30, 30 minutes to an hour. And then you let that cool and then you can work on that. If you want to flat and polish it, you can flat and polish it from there. If it doesn't need that, it can go straight out. From the paint shop, any final touches for the base layer is added. For example, this carbon vinyl on the front nose to replicate exactly how it looks on the real Formula One car. We then come to the final stage here in the race bay. This is where the crew construct the show car together, adding on any vinyl stickers and prepare it for either the team or the customer to be shipped away. But here is where all the key details of making the car look identical is put together. Everything from the seat belts and the steering wheels, even down to a 360 camera replica and more. The main thing that comes to the paint shop is the what we would call a chassis or the tub, which is this thing here. Uh, but this is how it comes to us and we build it from here. So it will get sort of cameras and aerials and or your, um, your wishbone fixings and that, um, steering rack in the front. Um, and that's how we start to build the show car. We call it the engine frame. Engine frame will be bolted onto the back face here and it is effectively replacing what would normally be an engine and gearbox assembly uh, because on a Formula One car or certainly a, an open wheel sports car, all your suspension is fixed to the gearbox. So because it doesn't have a gearbox, it fixes to the engine frame. We, we call these the pods. Normally in a, in a, norm, in a proper car, you'd have uh, radiators in there and coolers and all that sort of business and it is just a, a shell that goes over the top and it looks good. Yeah the seat is actually taken from, I unfortunately I can't remember who, but it is taken from a driver's seat and it's only a small driver because they're all small in Formula 1 but it is taken, it's, it's moulded off a proper driver's seat. The tyres are Pirelli, proper, well they're not proper slicks, they are slick tyres but they're, they're what's called a show car tyre so they have less structure, there's less strength to them. So they are a tyre of sorts but it's not something you could be used on the track. It's pallet wrap, essentially, and it's just to protect the uh, the look, really, of the tyre. So when the customer gets it, it's as clean and fresh as possible. It still rolls forwards and backwards. It does have steering, so you can move it easier because it's still probably five and a half hundred kilos at least, but it has no brakes. Uh, this is just, I call them metallics, but this is just some of the suspension parts that we use. Um, this is a rear wishbone, but this is what it looks like before it goes to carbon shop and then has its carbon cover over it. It is based on a, a, a proper formula car. So, you know, there's your axle, there's your upright, and then you've obviously got your steering arms and your suspension joints, um, or your clevises that bolt to the upright that allow you to then affix it to the suspension arm. We fit all our cars with these now. It comes with a display, can show a number of things. These generally have a, a JPEG image that comes up. We can have uh, gear change lights flash. We can have scrollable screen. We have a ger generic show car, which we built at the start of the season. That was for sort of the manufacturers. But the Alfa Romeo was our first proper customer car. So when the teams came out at the start of the year and wanted to show people their new color schemes, they would buy those from us, paint it in their new color schemes. So it was as close to their car as they wanted to dare sort of show anybody, but it wasn't their car because they didn't want to show everybody their new car. Uh, so stickers, uh, it is an exact copy of what's on the on the team's car, on Alfa's car. Um, they will send us a, uh, a design sheet, as it were. We get the stickers made to their specification and we are re required to sticker the car as they run the car. Generally, we'll, we'll get the stickers and it's just a big sheet of uh, Fablon, as it were, and, and we, we have a laser cutter or a, a blade cutter that mechanically cuts it all out um, to a computer design, so it's all accurate. Um, and then we just have to stick it in the right place. For something like this, we would get a 20 foot container and it'd solely be for the car. And we'd just strap it into the container as if it was a proper car shut the doors, lock it up and send it on the, on the truck. If you'd like to find out more about Memento Exclusive, they're linked down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, why not hit subscribe? But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.